Good morning, everybody. Today we're going to talk about multi select option sets, part of the V9 update that shifted in October. So we covered this a couple weeks ago, but I thought I'd go through it and do it in more detail. So here we go. So let's talk about uh, the beginning stuff here. Um, my name is Mitch Milam. If you didn't know that already, uh, you can reach me via email or Twitter or LinkedIn or on my YouTube channel. Remember that all of my webinars are always, always recorded and they're always put up on my YouTube channel. So subscribe to the channel and you'll get automatic notifications. So that's a good thing. Uh, a little bit of housekeeping here so you can raise your hand if you want to uh, ask questions. Uh, otherwise, everybody is muted. So a cool thing here, um, I am having a Cyber Monday sale on Monday, and for those of you attending today, I'm actually opening it up uh, early. So uh, I have two uh, products that are going to be on sale, my Snapshot, which is my documentation tool, and my JavaScript development course. So uh, both of those use the code Cyber Monday 2017, and that will be available until Monday at 11.59 p.m. Central Time, so midnight uh, on Monday night. So let's talk about the definition of the option set value. So basically, it's a standard option set. It's defined exactly the same, except for the fact that our data type is option set value or multi-select option set. It can be either a local value, which means it's only on the entity, or it can be a global multi-select option set, just like the regular option set. It works with the hub interface, which is the uh, two boxes in the middle. So those are the new interfaces with the unified stuff or um, uh or the uh, interactive service hubs or anything that has hub in the name, um, but it cannot be a calculated field. So that's uh, one thing we have to watch for. So let's talk about the data entry piece. So when you click on the, uh, the down arrow that's beside the uh, enter text here box, it will actually pop up a list that shows you the beginning of the list. So you can uh, select all of the options or you can select uh, each individual one but the cool thing at the upper right hand corner of the list it will actually show you how many items you have in this case we have five items four are visible which means we have one more that we have to scroll down and see if you start typing it will actually start filtering the list based on what you saw as you can see here we had farming and fishing so when i typed in the letter f it will actually filter that list based on those items and show you how many you have on the right hand side Editing values is uh, a little bit different than your normal field. So when uh, when the item is at rest or you're not editing it, you see a uh, delimited string that shows you your options. For So for U U.S. English, the delimiter is actually a semicolon that could vary based on your language code. When you click on the... Um, the edit box what will happen is it will pop up the box in the upper right hand corner as you can see it has two items listed fishing and farming and if we want to we can actually remove items just by clicking the x beside the name and it will actually delete it from the selection of the list if we click the down arrow uh, over on the right hand side next to the enter text here box it will pop up the list with the items already selected as you can see here so let's go into how we uh, look at views. So again, the way that it's going to be displayed within the system is um, with the, comp the, um, the limited string. So fishing, sunset washing, fishing farming, as you can see on the right hand side. We can filter on individual uh, items, but we can't sort on those. So as you can see um, in the previous thing here, um, interest is the last column, but it's not showing in the uh, sort order, which means that you cannot sort on that. So sorting can't be done on a multi, uh, multi select option set. But however, we can actually add um, an icon to that column, just like we can for most of the others by specifying a web, web resource and a uh, function name for that. Editable grid is very similar to actually editing on the form. The uh, box is exactly the same. As you can see here, we have three uh, options selected. We can remove them by pressing the X, or we can click the down arrow and actually get a list of others. Filtering is a little bit different. Um, the filtering here, everything is selected by default, and then we just go and unselect it and click the Apply button. So... Uh, finding stuff is not that different than what we've been used to with standard option sets. So we have a multi-select list, uh, so we have more than one item selected. We are actually generating behind the scenes the N operator. So new interest is N, either 1 million or 1 million three, which corresponds to the farming and the fishing values. Additionally, what they did for version 9 is they added a new operator called contains-values. So 
there's a new thing within the advanced find uh, set called select values and what it does is use contains values and this is just to make it um, consistent with all of the other programmatic changes we're going to talk about here in a minute so let's get into how we look with JavaScript so nothing has really changed uh, related to the way that we work with option sets or multi-select option sets the the uh, commands and methods that we normally use still work the same but the data that they return is different so the get text method of the attribute will return the textual representation of the currently selected text of the option set in the multi-select option case what it will do is it will return the um, the text uh, for each selected item but in, instead of a semicolon in our case we have now have a comma separating them so fishing and kiteboarding is what we actually selected so when we get the text this is what's going to be shown to us similarly get value normally returns the integer value but what's returning now is actually an array and actually that's what actually happens with the uh, the text um, as well we're actually returning arrays so when working with the multi-select option set we have to actually uh, work with an array of values so array of integers or array of text strings and what will happen is we'll actually see that uh, specified um, uh, in, in the array when it comes back so setting the value which is the exact opposite of getting the value of course we'll actually need to pass in a, um, a value that's going to be uh, input to, for that so uh, the array is, is going to be um, just uh, your standard JavaScript array and then the items inside the array are going to be numbers so with C sharp we now have a thing called an option set value collection and that option set value collection is just a collection or a list of option set values like we've always worked with. So as you can see here, we're creating a new contact where the first name is going to be Wayne, the last name is going to be Yarborough, and then we're going to add two outdoor activities. And uh, item number one is going to be swimming, which has a value option set value of one. The second item is going to be camping, which has a uh, option set value of nine. And by adding that option set value collection to our contact that we've generated in memory when we create it it will automatically assign those values um, performing a query in C sharp with a, uh, a query expression again we have that new operator called contains values or we also have the opposite which it does not contain values so similar to that Web API is a little bit different. It's like a lot of weird jargon here, but the what this says here is I would like to look in the uh, contact, give me the full name and the sample outdoor activities fields, filter where the property name uh, sample outdoor activities, which is the field, has a property value of two. So we're going to bring up any items that have the property value of two. And the results of that, which is this is not the same query, but the results of that, what we have is the ability to get back both the formatted values, if you request them, and the actual values. So the formatted values for what we are pulling back are swimming and camping. As you can see, we have a delimiter semicolon in there. And then the sample outdoor activities, the actual value of that field is an array. The way it comes back is uh, separated by comma, so it's one comma nine. So one's a value for swimming, nine is a value for camping. So one of the cool things about the way this works at the interface is the way that the um, developers created the new uh, multi-select option set is it works exactly the same way in the uh, updated interface versus the new unified interface so what that means is the way that you see it and the way you interact with it is exactly the same um, in both um, the web or if we go over to the new uh, interactive experience or hub as they call it which is the new unified interface so as you can see here this looks exactly the same as it does within the mobile so here's the mobile Here's my active contacts. If I click on this, it will be look and act exactly the same way because it's actually the same set of code. So that's really cool. It doesn't require any retraining. Everything else works the same. The only caveat that uh, I forgot to mention earlier in my slide presentation is uh, working with processes. So if you look at our contact form here, say we're going to update a contact, you'll notice that my interest is not here. And what that means is basically there's something um, that would cause the workflow engine not to be able to update this or work with it. So they just removed it from the interface. So this is very similar to how 
the uh, status reason uh, field is uh, uh, works within the in, within the uh, workflow engine. You can't actually update it itself. You actually have to use the uh, the set status. So we can't at this point uh, update a multi-select option set with the um, with the workflow engine. So that's the only caveat I found. Other than that, it works exactly as you would expect it to in both uh, both the interfaces. Uh, this is the edible grid. If uh, if you didn't didn't see that, and this is again the uh, new interface, the unified interface we're going to have one day permanently everywhere. Right now, it's called it's part of the what they call Sales Hub, and uh, which is again the same one as it, as is in the um, the mobile client or the tablet client. So that's pretty much it for today. Um, one other thing that we brought up is um, when doing data imports, uh, one of the uh, attendees today, Pam, mentioned that uh, there's a bug with the way that it imports data and um, the importing of multi-select option sets, if you export it for re-import, it can cause a problem where it would actually create new data, uh, which is not a good thing. That's uh, been notified and they're working on a fix for that, but no fixes, uh, no time frame on that. So be careful when you import your own. Uh, you might run into some issues you don't expect, so do a test first. And that's it. Thanks a lot.